1912, the Titanic embarked on its maiden voyage to New York City, but disaster struck when it collided with an iceberg near Newfoundland on April 15, 1912, claiming over 1,500 lives. This tragedy spurred global attention and significant advancements in maritime safety. Yet amidst the investigations, whispers hint at an alternate narrative. Recently, a survivor of the Titanic claimed the sinking is not what you're being told. This revelation has reignited discussions about what truly happened on that fateful night over a century ago. Join us as we delve into a different perspective on this century-old maritime tragedy, one that raises questions about what truly happened on that cold April night, the switch theory. In 1912, the world anticipated the maiden voyage of the Titanic, renowned as the largest and most opulent ship of its time. However, speculation arises as some individuals posit a perplexing notion. The Titanic may not have sunk. Instead, proponents of this theory propose that the ship that met its supposed demise was, in fact, the Olympic, the Titanic's sister vessel, cleverly disguised. This purported ruse is believed to be a strategic component of an elaborate insurance fraud scheme. The Olympics and the Titanic were virtually indistinguishable, being crafted by the same entity, White Star Line, and sharing nearly identical appearances. The narrative suggests that due to prior mishaps, the company opted to switch the damaged Olympic with the pristine Titanic. The primary motivation behind this alleged swap was financial. Repairing the Olympics was deemed economically impractical, prompting the company to orchestrate the exchange and intentionally sink the pseudo-Titanic, thus facilitating a substantial insurance claim. Executing such a maneuver seemingly required only minor alterations. A few exchanged lifeboats, some adjusted nameplates, and the transformation was complete. The theory even postulates the complicity of the crew, suggesting their potential involvement and sworn silence under the looming threat of job loss. However, contemplating the deliberate sinking of a vessel bearing thousands of passengers solely for financial gain evokes a sense of moral detachment even by the standards of the era. Conspiracy theorists highlight specific details they believe bolster this theory. They point to purported disparities in the number of portholes between the Olympics and the Titanic. Allegedly, pre-voyage photographs of the Titanic display a porthole configuration aligning with that of the Olympics. Additionally, survivor testimonies contribute to the speculation. Some recall a distinct formality aboard the Titanic, noting peculiarities like the letters MP on various items, potentially indicating remnants of the Olympics original name, RMS Olympic, concealed but faintly discernible. Detractors of this theory counter by emphasizing the differences between the ships. They assert that while similar, the interiors were distinct, and the Olympics bore a noticeable dent absent on the Titanic. Moreover, they question the feasibility of swapping two colossal vessels clandestinely among hundreds of workers. This logistical challenge appears implausible to them. However, crucial to this narrative is the human factor. Proponents suggest that if this were a deception, it disastrously backfired. Allegedly intended as a staged minor mishap to claim insurance without endangering passengers, events took an unforeseen turn. The unforeseen encounter with an iceberg led to the rapid sinking of the supposed fake Titanic, thwarting any chance of a dramatic rescue by nearby vessels. Following the Titanic's sinking, two inquiries were conducted by the United States Senate and the British Rec Commissioner. Both inquiries concluded that it was indeed the Titanic that met its tragic fate. However, for those who adhered to the switch theory, these inquiries were perceived as mere elements of a cover-up, designed to cement the supposed deception in historical records. An interesting aspect to consider is that the Titanic and the Olympics had distinct insurance policies held by different companies. The insurance payout received by White Star Line for the Titanic's sinking fell short of covering the entire cost of the ship. From a financial perspective, this discrepancy challenges the feasibility of the purported scam. Despite the absence of conclusive evidence, the persistence of the switch theory persists, fueled by human fascination with mysteries and intrigue. 
The Titanic's narrative already encompasses elements of luxury and tragedy, and this theory adds a compelling layer of complexity. Ultimately, the switch theory, like many conspiracy theories, leaves us with more inquiries than resolutions. Did White Star Line truly orchestrate a ship swap as part of an insurance scheme, or is this merely a product of imaginative storytelling? The truth, akin to the Titanic itself, remains submerged in the depths of history, prompting us to ponder and speculate on what might have unfolded. The Mummy's Curse The notion of an ancient Egyptian curse haunting the Titanic is indeed a chilling and captivating tale that has woven itself into the fabric of the ship's lore. This weird theory suggests that among the opulence and affluent passengers on the Titanic was an Egyptian mummy, a sarcophagus lid purportedly carrying a curse capable of bringing misfortune and death upon its possessors. According to the story, this mummy, allegedly that of an Egyptian priestess, bore a history steeped in tragedy and ominous happenings long before it was rumored to have been on board the ill-fated Titanic. Initially discovered in Egypt, it was said to have found its way to the British Museum, where it was associated with a string of misfortunes, deaths, and haunting sightings. The tales of inexplicable deaths, ghostly apparitions, and unending calamities seem to follow anyone in contact with this cursed relic. The connection between this ominous mummy and the titanic disaster arises from rumors suggesting its presence on the ship. The supposed coincidence of a cursed artifact aboard a ship that met such a tragic end captured the imagination of many. However, Clarity on this matter becomes elusive as the British Museum vehemently refutes any claim of the mummy ever being part of their collection, let alone being on the Titanic. They have steadfastly dismissed this notion as a fabrication stemming from sensationalism and vivid imaginations. Despite the museum's clear denials, the legend persisted, fueled by the allure of ancient curses and the mystique surrounding the Titanic. Some accounts from respected individuals of that era even purportedly claimed to have witnessed the mummy or its sarcophagus aboard the ship. However, this leads us to question the practicality and plausibility of such a scenario. Consider the logistics involved. Transporting an enormous heavy sarcophagus on the Titanic seems implausible given the meticulous record-keeping of the ship's cargo manifest. The vessel, a feat of modern engineering, embarked on its maiden voyage amidst much celebration and was unlikely to have risked its voyage for an ancient artifact, cursed or otherwise. Moreover, a sarcophagus is hardly inconspicuous and would have posed significant challenges in terms of handling and concealment. In unraveling this supernatural theory, one encounters a fascinating blend of myth and reality. While the allure of an ancient curse aboard the Titanic persists in the popular imagination, the evidence supporting the presence of the cursed mummy on the doomed ship remains shrouded in skepticism and contradiction. The conspiracy theorists' argument that the manifest might have been altered, or that the mummy was stealthily smuggled aboard, may seem like a stretch, given the meticulous record-keeping of the Titanic's cargo. Yet the allure of a supernatural explanation for tragic events, such as the sinking of the Titanic, prompts a deeper philosophical inquiry. When faced with incomprehensible disasters, humans often seek supernatural or mystical reasons to provide meaning or understanding. The sinking of the Titanic was an earth-shattering event, regarded as an emblem of human progress and deemed unsinkable. Its catastrophic demise shattered these beliefs leaving many grappling with a loss of faith in technology and human achievement. In this context, the notion of a mummy's curse emerges as a way for humanity to rationalize such an unfathomable disaster. It serves as a fantastical explanation, offering a semblance of reason for an event that defied belief. The legend of the mummy's curse within the Titanic's narrative intertwines history, mystery, and the supernatural. It infuses an exotic and bizarre essence into the Titanic's tale, tempting us to entertain the notion that ancient curses could transcend time, altering the course of history. The Advanced Technology Theory Among the array of Titanic theories, one particularly intriguing thread weaves historical allure with technological speculation, the Advanced Technology Hypothesis. This theory deviates from the iceberg collision narrative, proposing that the Titanic's demise resulted from a catastrophic failure linked to experimental technology. 
a blend of early radar, futuristic machinery, or other avant-garde innovations from the early 20th century. At its core, this hypothesis pivots on the notion that the Titanic, as the pinnacle of luxury and technological advancement for its era, might have housed experimental technology kept clandestine from the public eye. Some proponents suggest that the ship could have been testing early forms of radar or sonar intended for underwater object detection. The theory posits that a malfunction in this experimental technology contributed to the ship's tragic fate. An alternate viewpoint imagines the Titanic as part of a covert experiment involving electromagnetic technology, which, if failed, led to the ship's disappearance. According to this narrative, the Titanic's sinking served as a cover-up for a broader technological catastrophe. However, assessing the credibility of this theory necessitates examining the technological landscape of the early 1900s. While the Titanic boasted cutting-edge navigation and communication technology for its time, the sophisticated advancements proposed in this theory, like radar, were not practically in use until the 1930s, well after the Titanic's inaugural voyage. The extensive investigations following the Titanic's sinking yielded no evidence supporting the presence of experimental technology on board. These inquiries meticulously probed the sinking's causes and the loss of lives, scrutinizing aspects ranging from the ship's construction to the crew's actions. However, there existed no mention or indication of secret technology or conducted experiments. Critics of the advanced technology hypothesis emphasize the impracticality of executing a high-stakes experiment aboard a passenger liner like the Titanic, carrying over 2,200 passengers and crew, including numerous prominent individuals, it seems improbable that a secretive and potentially perilous technological test would be undertaken in such a public and risky environment. Despite the absence of tangible evidence, the allure of the advanced technology hypothesis lies in its amalgamation of historical conjecture and the fascination with covert technological endeavors. It taps into our intrigue for concealed histories and the tantalizing prospect that the past might harbor yet undiscovered secrets. Ultimately, the advanced technology hypothesis, while compelling, remains unverified, serving as an intriguing but unconfirmed addition to the myriad of narratives encircling the Titanic. It prompts contemplation about historical technological prowess and the extent to which individuals might have pursued innovation. The Time Travel Theory Another peculiar theory emerges, one that fuses the realms of science fiction and historical events. Time travel. Yes, as improbable as it may sound, there exists a faction who propose that the Titanic's catastrophic fate was averted not by chance, but by the intervention of time travelers, a notion that challenges conventional understanding and prompts a unique exploration into the realms of possibility. Imagine voyaging through time, armed with knowledge of the Titanic's impending doom. This theory posits that individuals from the future journeyed back to the year 1912, driven by a noble mission to prevent the disaster. The concept itself sparks curiosity and intrigue, melding imagination with historical narrative. Yet, as with any gripping tale, this theory is adorned with twists and turns that provoke contemplation and debate among enthusiasts. Supporters of this theory point to an array of anomalies and curiosities woven into the fabric of historical records. Photographs from the era have drawn keen scrutiny, with claims that certain individuals captured aboard the Titanic appear conspicuously out of place for the early 1910s. Their attire and hairstyles bear a resemblance to more modern fashion, sparking speculation about the possibility of these individuals being time travelers. Moreover, Intriguingly, some hold objects that bear resemblance to gadgets of the future. Could these artifacts unwittingly reveal the presence of time travelers, momentarily slipping through the veil of time and captured by the lens of the past? Intriguing anecdotes further fuel this enigmatic theory. Accounts from survivors of the Titanic recount encounters with mysterious individuals who seemed to materialize unexpectedly offering aid or issuing warnings to passengers and crew alike. Though often veiled in vagueness and relayed as secondhand tales, these narratives spark contemplation. Could these enigmatic figures appear out of the blue, 
have been time travelers on a clandestine mission to alter the course of history and save lives? Let's step back and consider the concept of time travel, as enthralling as it may be, remains firmly entrenched in the realms of science fiction. As we understand the laws of physics today, they don't provide avenues for traveling backwards through time. Therefore, the foundation of this theory stands on precarious scientific ground, given our current understanding of the universe. Moreover, if we entertain the notion that time travelers intervene to prevent the Titanic disaster, it raises significant questions about history itself. If such an alteration occurred, wouldn't our recorded history reflect a different narrative? The Titanic remains etched in historical memory as a tragic maritime catastrophe. For this time travel theory to stand, one would need to entertain concepts like parallel universes or the ability to alter the past without affecting the present. Fascinating ideas prevalent in science fiction but highly speculative in the context of real-world physics. Critics of the theory also highlight plausible explanations for the perceived anomalies in photographs. Fashion trends of the era, lesser-known styles, or even photographic quirks could easily account for what some perceive as anachronisms. Similarly, survivor accounts, while gripping, often falter in their accuracy due to the inherent unreliability of human memory, especially in high-stress situations like the sinking of the Titanic. These mysterious individuals recounted in survivor stories were lesser-known crew members or passengers who displayed remarkable bravery amidst the chaos. Despite the implausibility of the time travel theory concerning the Titanic, it possesses an undeniable allure. It taps into the human fascination with what-ifs. What if the Titanic had never sunk? What if history could be altered at a pivotal moment? These questions open up a vast realm of speculation and imagination, stirring endless contemplation about alternate realities. The alien intervention theory. The exploration of wild theories surrounding the Titanic takes an extraordinary turn with the introduction of what might be considered the most outlandish of them all, the alien intervention theory. Yes, some individuals entertain the belief that extraterrestrial beings played a pivotal role in shaping the Titanic's fate. This concept propels us beyond the depths of the ocean into the boundless expanse of space, inviting an exploration of cosmic possibilities. Supporters of the alien intervention theory draw attention to various unexplained phenomena associated with the Titanic sinking. They point to reports of peculiar lights spotted in the sky and abnormal weather patterns observed on the fateful night the ship met its demise. Some proponents even challenge the traditional narrative, suggesting that the iceberg collision might have been a cover story, concealing a more otherworldly encounter. One version of this theory postulates that extraterrestrial entities monitoring Earth, intervened upon witnessing the impending disaster. They purportedly manipulated temporal fields, altering the course of events to rescue the Titanic from a potentially graver fate. Another imaginative variant speculates that aliens transported portions of the passengers and crew to safety in an alternate dimension, or even more fancifully, teleported the entire ship away at the moment of collision. In this extraordinary rendition, the Titanic might now exist as an intergalactic artifact, either replicated by aliens or replaced with an entirely different vessel, while the one resting at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean is a mere replica or decoy. However, it's crucial to temper the fascination with plausibility. Skepticism arises as there's a lack of concrete evidence supporting the notion of alien involvement in the Titanic's tragedy. Reports of unusual lights and weather might find explanations in more terrestrial phenomena, such as the northern lights or peculiar meteorological conditions, rather than extraterrestrial interference. The pursuit of understanding extraterrestrial life remains a captivating field of study. However, despite its fascination, conclusive evidence supporting the existence of intelligent alien civilizations, let alone their ability to traverse vast cosmic distances and interact with humans, remains elusive within the realm of scientific inquiry. The logistical challenges of an alien spacecraft intervening in a terrestrial maritime disaster pose numerous scientific unknowns and hurdles that are yet to be surmounted. Critics of the alien intervention theory emphasize its heavy reliance on speculation and its penchant for sensationalism. 
the meticulously documented chain of events leading to the Titanic's tragedy, has undergone extensive investigation, firmly establishing a historical narrative. The incorporation of extraterrestrial elements into this narrative, critics argue, serves as an unnecessary complication, diverting attention from the genuine historical and human dimensions of the disaster. Despite lacking a foundation in empirical scientific evidence, the allure of the alien intervention theory persists. It taps into humanity's enduring fascination with the enigmatic and unexplained, reflecting our innate inclination to gaze toward the stars for answers and to ponder the mysteries lying beyond our current comprehension. Unraveling the No Pope Conspiracy The construction of the Titanic in Belfast by the renowned shipbuilding firm Harland & Wolf has long been shrouded in a peculiar conspiracy theory that has circulated for years. At the heart of this theory is the claim that Catholic workers, upon the revelation of the new ship's hull number, 390904, reacted with horror, believing that when this alphanumeric sequence is flipped upside down, it cryptically spells out, no Pope. According to the theory, these Catholic workers saw this as a form of blasphemy, raising concerns that the ship might be doomed. However, a meticulous examination of the facts reveals substantial flaws in this conspiracy theory, a point that has also been thoroughly debunked by fact-checking sources like Snopes. Firstly, it is crucial to note that the Titanic was officially assigned a yard number of 401 by Harland and Wolf, rendering the purported 390904 number entirely fictitious. This invalidates the foundational premise of the theory. Moreover, Historical records contradict the notion that Catholic workers would have been present at the shipyard during the construction of the Titanic. Going back to 1886, tensions between Protestant and Catholic employees at Harland and Wolfe reached a boiling point, resulting in a large-scale attack by Protestant workers on their Catholic counterparts. This event, documented in The Invention of the White Race, led to a significant exodus of Catholic workers from the shipbuilder, during this time, Harland and Wolfe, as Belfast's largest employer, gained a reputation for exclusively hiring Protestant workers. Annie Caulfield's work, Irish Blood, English Heart, Ulster Fry, Return Journeys to Ireland, further corroborates the prevailing sentiment by noting that, by the 20th century, Harland and Wolfe had a reputation for only employing Protestants. This historical context dispels the notion that Catholic workers could have been present at the shipyard during the Titanic's construction, undermining the credibility of the conspiracy theory. Beyond the factual inaccuracies, it is essential to recognize that shipyard hull numbers are systematically assigned by the overseeing authorities. In the case of the Titanic, the officially designated yard number was 401, underscoring the arbitrary nature of the alleged hull number, 390904. Such numbers are not whimsically generated, rather they follow a deliberate and regulated process to streamline communication and record-keeping within the shipbuilding industry. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Titanic Survivor breaks in tears. The sinking is not what you're being told. Captain L.M. Collins, an experienced member of the ICE pilotage service, carefully studied the evidence and reached a significant conclusion about the Titanic tragedy. His expertise in ICE navigation and testimony review during post-disaster inquiries led him to challenge the widely held belief that the Titanic collided with an iceberg. In his book, The Sinking of the Titanic, The Mystery Solved, Collins extensively delves into this perspective. One crucial observation highlighted by Collins revolves around the absence of reported haze throughout the night of the Titanic's demise. At 11.30 p.m., the lookouts noticed what they interpreted as a haze on the horizon, stretching approximately 20 degrees on either side of the ship's bow. However, Collins posits that this supposed haze was, in fact, a strip of low-lying pack ice, positioned about three to four miles ahead of the vessel. Significantly, eyewitnesses presented varying descriptions of the ice's height. The lookouts estimated it at 60 feet high, Quartermaster Rowe on the deck approximated it at 100 feet high, while 4th Officer Boxhall, near the darkened bridge, described it as very low in the water. Collins rationalizes these discrepancies by citing an optical illusion familiar to ice navigators. 
where extreme cold and calm waters distort the perception of objects near the waterline. This distortion can make these objects appear to be as high as the ship's lights, hence the differing estimations. Collins proposes a different scenario altogether. The Titanic, executing a turn that involved rotating one-third from the bow, inadvertently drove its starboard side into a low-lying iceberg or pack ice. This collision likely resulted in immediate and catastrophic damage to the ship's starboard hull and possibly the superstructure. Consequently, the vessel rapidly flooded, capsized, and sank within minutes. This theory aligns with witness accounts and provides an alternative perspective on the tragic events that led to the Titanic's demise. Please share your thoughts on this matter. J.P. Morgan planned the disaster to kill his rivals. Another theory suggests that the millionaire banker J.P. Morgan orchestrated the tragic events with the intent of eliminating his rivals, Jacob Astor, Isidore Strauss, and Benjamin Guggenheim, all of whom tragically perished on the ill-fated voyage. However, a closer examination reveals significant inconsistencies and implausibilities within this narrative. At the heart of the theory lies the claim that J.P. Morgan originally intended to sail on the Titanic, but changed his plans at the last moment. The theory, however, falters when attempting to provide a plausible explanation for how Morgan could have orchestrated the ship's collision with an iceberg, resulting in the loss of over 1,500 lives, including those of his supposed targets. The lack of a credible mechanism for causing such a catastrophic event raises serious doubts about the validity of this conspiracy theory. Additionally, the theory suggests that Morgan's motive for orchestrating the disaster was rooted in his desire to eliminate Astor, Strauss, and Guggenheim due to their opposition to the creation of the Federal Reserve. However, a scrutiny of historical records reveals that Astor and Guggenheim did not appear to have taken a public stance on the Federal Reserve, and notably, Strauss supported its establishment. The inconsistency between the purported motive and the known positions of the victims weakens the credibility of the theory. Interestingly, alternative versions of this conspiracy theory introduce other entities as the alleged masterminds behind the plot. Some versions point fingers at the Rothschild banking family or the Jesuits, claiming that they orchestrated the deaths of Astor, Strauss, and Guggenheim on the Titanic. It is essential to note that invoking the Rothschilds as conspirators falls into the realm of a centuries-old anti-Semitic trope. The Rothschild family, having founded banking houses across Europe in the early 1800s, has been a recurrent target of conspiracy theorists, particularly those with anti-Semitic leanings. Notably, this titanic conspiracy theory has resurfaced in contemporary discussions, becoming entwined with the far-right conspiracy theory known as Quanon. Quanon posits a secret plot by an alleged deep state against U.S. President Donald Trump and his supporters. Expansion Joint's Hypothesis The ongoing debate among titanic researchers regarding the causes and mechanics of the ship's breakup has been a nuanced exploration of the events leading to one of the most infamous maritime disasters in history. Walter Lord's depiction in his seminal work, A Night to Remember, describing the Titanic assuming an absolutely perpendicular position shortly before its final plunge, had long shaped the prevailing narrative. This perspective persisted even after the discovery of the wreck by Robert Ballard in 1985, which revealed the ship had broken into two pieces at or near the surface. The visual representation of the Titanic's breakup in paintings by marine artist Ken Marshall and its portrayal in James Cameron's film, Titanic, added to the perception that the ship attained a steep angle before its demise. However, a pivotal shift occurred in 2005 when a History Channel expedition scrutinized two large sections of the Titanic's keel, the portion of the ship's bottom immediately below the site of the break. This examination, assisted by naval architect Roger Long, led to the development of a new breakup scenario challenging the previously accepted narrative. The key element of this revised theory centered on the claim that the Titanic's angle at the time of the breakup was significantly less than commonly assumed, peaking at no more than 11 degrees. Long also proposed that the premature failure of the ship's aft expansion joint might have triggered the breakup, accelerating the sinking and contributing to a higher loss of life than anticipated. 
The History Channel's dives on Titanic's sister ship, Britannic, 2006 supported the theory that Britannic's expansion joints were superior in design compared to those on the Titanic. However, a subsequent computer simulation commissioned by the History Channel and featured in the 2007 documentary Titanic's Achilles Heel presented a nuanced counterpoint. The simulation demonstrated that the Titanic's expansion joints were structurally robust and outperformed their design specifications during the sinking. Crucially, it clarified that these expansion joints, situated above the strength deck and part of the superstructure, had no bearing on the support of the hull. They simply opened and parted as the hull flexed or broke beneath them. Brad Matson's 2008 book, Titanic's Last Secrets, endorsed the expansion joint theory, adding weight to Long's perspective. An important observation in this context was the collapse of the first funnel at a relatively shallow angle, which occurred when the forward expansion joint, over which several funnel stays crossed, opened as the hull was stressing. The resultant stretching and snapping of the stays, coupled with the ship's forward momentum, led to the funnel toppling onto the starboard bridge wing. A theory supporting hull fracturing suggests that the Titanic may have partly grounded on the ice shelf below the waterline during the collision with the iceberg, potentially damaging the keel and underbelly. This theory gains credibility from observations during the sinking, particularly the flooding of Boiler Room 4 from below the floor grates, rather than over the top of the watertight bulkhead. Such evidence aligns with the possibility of additional damage along the keel compromising the hull's integrity. Fact versus Fiction The ship swap theory proposes that the Titanic was replaced with its sister ship, the Olympics, in an insurance scheme. However, meticulous examination reveals substantial differences between the two vessels. Despite similarities, distinct features would have been challenging to conceal. Additionally, financial logistics don't align. The insurance payout didn't cover the Titanic's construction costs. Crucially, extensive inquiries after the disaster corroborate that it was indeed the Titanic that met its tragic end. Next, the mummy's curse theory delves into the supernatural realm, suggesting a cursed Egyptian mummy aboard the Titanic. Yet, the British Museum denies possessing such a mummy or any affiliation with the purported curse. Although strange, this theory lacks tangible evidence, residing more in the realm of imagination than historical reality. The notion of time travel altering the Titanic's fate blends science fiction with history. However, as per current scientific understanding, time travel remains firmly within the realm of fiction. Additionally, this theory fails to account for documented events leading to the Titanic's sinking, lending it more to imaginative storytelling than historical accuracy. Another hypothesis suggests the Titanic fell victim to experimental technology. While intriguing, historical evidence doesn't support the presence of such advancements on the ship. Investigations predominantly focused on conventional factors like ship design and crew actions, devoid of any mention of clandestine experiments. Lastly, the alien intervention theory ignites the imagination, proposing extraterrestrial involvement in the Titanic's demise. However, this theory lacks credible evidence and aligns more with science fiction narratives than serious historical scrutiny. The popularity of these theories sheds light on the human fascination with enigmatic narratives and the allure of mystery. Despite lacking substantial evidence, these theories persist due to their ability to captivate the imagination. They highlight our tendency to seek explanations beyond conventional understanding, often resorting to speculative and fantastical notions. Historical analysis relies on documented evidence, tangible facts, and thorough scrutiny. While conspiracy theories might spark intrigue, critical examination of established historical records often exposes their fictional nature. These theories, though compelling, ultimately reside in the realm of imaginative speculation rather than credible historical truth. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.